Item number SCP-6397 Security Level 2 Containment Class Euclid Disruption Class Flam Risk Class Caution Special Containment Procedures SCP-6397 is to be stationed under MTF Kappa 9 Bad Boys so long as good behavior is maintained. If SCP-6397 begins to show signs of disloyalty to the Foundation, SCP-6397's service under the Kappa-9 Division will be temporarily suspended until a proper evaluation is determined. A tracking device has been implanted into SCP-6397's left ear and is to be replaced if ever broken. SCP-6397 is to be stationed at Bioresearch Area 12 for one month every year for physical examinations. SCP-6397 is not to be in the presence of any bird under the Corvus family. This includes all crows, ravens, and rooks. If an interaction is deemed unavoidable, Personnel are to not interfere with SCP-6397 and the animal until the altercation has ceased. Description SCP-6397 is a large female Canis lupus familiaris. Note, dog. Of the Golden Retriever breed, SCP-6397 has eight invisible tentacles originating from its body, while invisible to all spectrums of light including visible ultraviolet and infrared light. These tentacles persist in casting shadows onto surfaces. These tentacles have a strong connection with the physical plane and are frequently used by SCP-6397 to pick up objects, climb up walls, attack hostile entities, and use tools it otherwise would not be able to with its paws. SCP-6397's tentacles measure an average length of 1.5 meters and have the strength to lift objects weighing over 150 kilograms. These tentacles have a squishy velvet texture and the lower half of the tentacles are covered with strong suction cups similar to that of Octopus vulgaris. Note, the common octopus. SCP-6397 has the ability to regenerate its tentacles if said appendages is completely severed from the body. The time it takes for tentacles to regrow ranges anywhere from 2 weeks to 3 months, depending on the severity of the injury. SCP-6397 is strictly carnivorous, refusing to eat any plant-based food. In addition to this, SCP-6397 also refuses to eat any meat of land animals, instead only eating crustaceans, fish, and gastropods. Discovery Following beep, rumors circulating around the town of Charleston, Oregon about a supposed demon hound stealing large quantities of seafood from local fishing markets. Foundation objects stationed in the area were sent to investigate the situation. SCP-6397 was found on the beaches of Sunset Bay State Park. It was reported to have been gnawing on a dead crow, and several dead raven carcasses laid on the ground around it, some being held in the air by SCP-6397's tentacles. Addendum 6397-1 Intelligence SCP-6397 has shown intelligence levels far surpassing the average canine, understanding some human languages and basic mathematics. SCP-6397 had a base understanding of Spanish and English prior to containment. It is unknown how SCP-6397 learned these languages, but it is estimated that it is learned by observing humans. This theory has been supported by the fact that SCP-6397's level of English has improved by a substantial margin since initial containment, while SCP-6397's grasp of Spanish hasn't improved. SCP-6397 cannot communicate directly with humans via verbalization.
when SCP-6307 talks, it is only able to verbalate barks, whimpers, growls, and other sounds that an average canine is capable of producing. Instead, the only method of communication from SCP-6397 is fire writing. Foundation staff has taught SCP-6397 how to use a keyboard and write using pens and pencils. SCP-6397 uses its tentacles to type and write instead of using its paws. Addendum CG 3972 Interview 1 The following log was transcribed from a conversation between SCP-6397 and Dr. Hathaway. All phrases by SCP-6397 were typed into a keyboard using its tentacles. The keyboard was placed in its containment chamber and displayed on a monitor in the accompanying research lab. The conversation was held in the early weeks of SCP-6397 confinement, with its ability to write limited. Begin log. Hello, 6397. My name's Dr. Hathaway. I've been told you know how to work a keyboard. Can you show me? SCP-6397 walks over to the western wall of its containment chamber and retrieves the keyboard provided. It then returns to the glass, separating it from Dr. Hathaway. Yes, I know how to use a keyboard. Do you have fish? I'm hungry. Yes, in fact, I have some fish right here with me. And no, you can't have it yet, 6397. Only good girls get to have the fish. If you answer some of the questions I have for you, then you get treat. More questions? I told you a lot. What more do I have? Well, we are a little confused by some of your statements yesterday. Apparently, you've been telling staff that you're an octopus. Is that right? Yes, that is right. I am octopus. What is confusing about... <laughs> yes, well, you are aware that you look like a dog, right? We've done a lot of tests on you. They all show that you are, in fact, a dog. SCP-6397 walks over to a wall in its chamber and begins to float upwards. The keyboard is also raised higher into the air. Shadows of the tentacles originating from SCP-6397 move in a muddled pan, affixed to the wall. When SCP-6397 stops its ascent, the tentacle shadows appear erect and stable. I am an octopus. Levy raised iron friends. If I was not an octopus, how would I be do this? Hmm. Well, if you are an octopus, like you claim, why is it that you can't breathe underwater? You lost consciousness after being submerged in our tank for only 40 seconds. SCP-6397 whimpers and hangs his head down towards the ground, avoiding eye contact with Dr. Hathaway. I know, I am sad about it still. I cannot breathe again until mission is finished. A mission? What do you mean? SCP-6397 raises his head again to look back at Dr. Hathaway. I have to defeat Ming Menace. My people are count on me to defeat them. If I can't, they won't be the next you. Next you? What do you mean? You mean me? I want my fish, please. I'm hungry and tired. And log. SCP-6397 refused to communicate with any Foundation staff members for the remainder of the day. In the morning following said interview, SCP-6397 resumed normal behavior. A connection between SCP-6397 and SCP-2967 is currently under investigation. Addendum 6397-3 Incorporation in the Kappa-9 Project During an assault by the Chaos Insurgency, SCP-6397 managed to breach containment. Despite having a clear opportunity to escape, SCP-6397 aided in evacuating personnel to safe locations and later engaged insurgents in combat. These actions appear to have 
been done entirely of SCP-6397's own volition. Following this, SCP-6397 has undergone several Foundation loyalty tests and has scored amongst the top 1%. Because of these factors, SCP-6397 has been cleared for its incorporation into the Kappa-9 project. Mobile Task Force Kappa-9 Bad Boys Mobile Task Force Kappa-9, otherwise known as Bad Boys, is an MTF comprised in its entirety of canines, both anomalous and non-anomalous. Members of Kappa-9 specialized in reconnaissance and physical combat. Kappa-9 is only to be called in as a last resort in situations where human intervention is deemed either impossible or likely to negatively impact containment efforts. Addendum CT3974 Notable Incident Report The following is a catalogue of notable incidents involving SCP-6397 in its service under Mobile Task Force Kappa-9. A complete record of incidents involving Kappa-9 can be found here. MTFK-9 MO32 CT3-97 During an assault, SCP-804 was stolen by the Chaos Insurgency. Kappa-9 was called in to combat the insurgents and retrieve SCP-804. Said insurgents made it 8 kilometers before succumbing to SCP-804's mimetic effects. Using currently unknown anomalous methods, Set insurgents managed to alter SCP-804 to make it last longer before breaking. SCP-804 remained in effect for the following 10 hours, with its area of effect increasing during this time. SCP-6397 retrieved SCP-804 during this time and traveled with it into the beep away from human civilization. SCP-6397 traveled over 30 kilometers through the sub environment before SCP-804 ceased function. Five of its tentacles had to be amputated due to frostbite and a loss of one digit in its front left paw. The reduction of SCP-804's location is now mandatory to prevent similar incidents from occurring. MTF K9 M096 6397 During a routine training exercise on level 0 of Bio Research Area 12, a flock of crows began gathering in the area. SCP-6397 became aggressive towards the birds, growling and barking at them, ignoring orders by instructors. When SCP-6397 ran over to the crows intending to harm them, the crows descended upon SCP-6397 in an organized group. SCP-6397 managed to capture three crows within its tentacles before being overwhelmed by the birds and falling unconscious. The mother of crows lifted SCP-6397 into the air and carried it away into adjacent woodlands. MTF Kappa-9 pursued the murder for a kilometer before the murder descended and flew into a cave. When entered, the cave was discovered to be an inch labyrinth, with Kappa-9 losing sight of the murder and SCP-6397. SCP-6397 was later found deep in the cave with deep lacerations on its upper body, heavy bruising throughout, and all of its hair shaven off. A note was found stapled to its back. The following reads, You have lost your way, little one. Working with your jailer does not set your people free. MTF K9 M361 6397 During the months of March to May 2020, MTF Kappa 9 was stationed in the three Portlands to maintain some Foundation presence. Due to the mass outbreak and quarantine, during the early months of 2020, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, no Foundation staff was allowed in the three Portlands. Cabin 9 became very popular with the locals around Prometheus Plaza during this time. SCP-6397 would climb up the sides of buildings to greet the local children when they were quarantined. 
The local raven population in three portents decreased substantially during this time, largely in part due to SCP-6397's actions. On May 17th, 2020, a large migration of ravens took place, with several conspiracies relocating to the area surrounding Portland, Maine. Since then, the migration of ravens has been permanently altered to no longer arrive at Three Portlands, despite SCP-6397 and Kappa-9 being no longer present on site. How future generations of ravens know to avoid Three Portlands is unknown. Addendum 6397-5 Interview 2 Level 4 Access Required The following is the video recording of a psychiatric evaluation conducted between King Pathos Crow and SCP-6397. SCP-6397 made use of a keyboard and monitor to communicate. Begin log. SCP-6397 is seen escorted into the physiological room holding a keyboard. SCP-6397 takes a seat on a couch opposite King Pathos Crow by a glass table. SCP-6397 plugs the keyboard into a monitor affixed to the wall behind it. The guards that escorted SCP-6397 in then left the room. Hello, SCP-6397. I heard you had a little incident today. Do you mind telling me what happened? Who are you? You aren't a member of my squad. You can just call me K. I'm just a scientist. This is beside the point, though. Can you tell me what happened today? We were being attacked. Those women were all over the place. If I didn't act fast, we were good as dead. You were attacked. I was told you attacked them. Okay, well, technically I attacked them first, but they were going to hurt us. I can see it in their eyes. What do you mean you could see it in their eyes? They are disgusting. They want to be the next people. But that's not going to happen. We'll be the next them. What do you mean by that? We? What are we going to be? Sorry, sorry. Not we. We. I mean, we as in my kind, not your kind. King Pazos Crow is quiet for the next few moments, but the confused expression on his face. I think you've lost me. Who is we? Do you mean as dogs as we? Are you talking about the Golden Retriever breed specifically? <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you people, I am not a dog, I am an octopus. I was raised in the ocean by my family. I know this, I was there. King Pathos Crow gives off a loud howl and paints lightly. What? Do you truly think that you weren't always a dog? Oh, well, I can certainly relate to that. I wasn't a dog growing up either. SCP-6397 begins wagging its tail and barks with what appears to be a smile. What? Are you serious? Gilbert, is that you? What's going on? Why are you here? Shouldn't you be at home protecting the family? What? <laughs> Who are you talking about? I thought I already told you. I'm Dr. Crow. Kane Pathos Crow. I was once... SCP-6397's behavior and demeanor change seemingly instantaneously. It jumps to its feet, sinking its claws into the couch cushions underneath it. It lowers its head and bears its teeth towards King Pathos Crow. It proceeds to let out a deep growl. King Pathos Crow yelps in response to SCP-6397's behavior and gets to his feet. Whoa! SCP-6397 throws the keyboard at King Pathos Crow with its tentacles. King Pathos Crow ducks his head down to avoid the keyboard, missing his ear by only a few centimeters. Hold on there! What's wrong, girl? SCP-6397 leaps across the room, grabbing King Pathos Crow with its tentacles in a matter of seconds. King Pathos Crow claws aimlessly as he is suspended up into the air. King Pathos whimpers, gasping for air as he is being strangled by SCP-6397's tentacles. The door to the room is slammed open, and three security guards rush into the room. Drop it! I said, drop it! The two guards situated at front, Agents 
Bailey and Plague are knocked into the nearest wall by an unseen force. Agent Bailey is lifted up and his head is slammed into the wall in quick succession over the following seconds, losing consciousness as a result. Agent Colombo draws a modified hatchet and thrusts it downwards into the open air between SCP-6397 and Kane Pathos Crow. Kane Pathos Crow falls down onto the sofa, gasping for air. SCP-6397 lets out a howl and blood leaks from unseen points in the air around it before being pushed into the glass table, shattering it. Down! Down, girl! All individuals are covered in blood, but a large amount secreting from open cuts in the air. Where Columbo had severed SCP-6397's tentacles, even with significant blood loss, SCP-6397 is able to get to its feet in a fast manner. SCP-6397 once again throws itself towards King Pathos Crow. However, its trajectory is interrupted when Agent Columbo kicks it in the stomach, sending it hurtling across the room and into the wall. End log. King Pathos Crow and Agent Bailey were rushed to the infirmary. King Pathos Crow suffered a minor green stick fracture on his left scapula. His fore and hind limbs suffered acute muscle strains along with his neck. Due to the power of SCP-6397 suction cups, large patches of skin have been removed from Agent Bailey's scalp and neck. Agent Bailey also suffered a concussion. SCP-6397 Deployment in Kappa 9 Following Interview 2, SCP-6397 was temporarily suspended from MPF Kappa 9 and the evaluation for its continued employment was undertaken. After a thorough investigation, SCP-6397 was allowed back into MTF Kappa 9 as its skills have been deemed a valuable asset, and it has persisted to score in the 95th percentile in Foundation Loyalty Test, despite the violent altercation with a Level 4 Foundation researcher. SCP-6397 was reintegrated back into MTF Kappa 9 after 14 months of confinement. SCP-6397 and Kane Pathos Crow are not to make contact again, with SCP-6397 not allowed onto any site if Kane Pathos Crow is present.